Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm shooting this in the middle of a heat wave, so this is going to be a quick one. Uh, but I really wanted to take the time today to talk to you guys about three different ways that you can really up your game when you're handling errors. So, yo, let's talk about error handling. So error handling is a really critical part of any program. It's really important that we spend time on properly dealing with exceptions, exceptional cases and errors in our code. I see a lot of people who don't worry too much about the error handling, especially when they're in a time crunch. And that's something that really needs to be looked into because not handling errors properly will cause your program to break and specifically will cause your program to break in ways that you don't understand and that you have a hard time tracking. So take your time to do error handling properly and it's really gonna pay off in the long run. Let's look at three different things that you can do to up your game when handling errors. So the first thing I wanna talk about is not rethrowing or passing up the stack errors that you didn't create yourself. Knowing where errors come from is really important. It allows you, obviously, to debug your code a heck of a lot faster if you know which piece of the code is actually throwing the error or returning the error code. So when you're handling errors, make sure that you always wrap errors as they're going up the stack and that you don't allow errors to propagate simply because your language forces you to handle them. A great example of this is I've seen code written in Java that handles exceptions by catching the exception and rethrowing it. Similarly, code in Go will catch a returned error and return it immediately from the function. And what happens in these cases is that your error eventually reaches a place higher up in the code where it can't be handled and it becomes really difficult to figure out where that error came from. So make sure that you're wrapping that error as it comes up the stack and each different part of your code that's seeing that error go by should be talking about what particular process was going on at the time that the error occurred. Tip number two for upping your error handling game is don't handle or log errors too low in the stack. This is something that I see a lot in log files. So where you'll have code that on every single function that calls another function that calls another function that eventually raises an exception, all of these functions on up the stack, each successively will log a line in the logs. And I get why it happens. It happens because you're writing code, you're in one function, you wanna know if the thing's working, you catch the exception in the next function up, you log the exception, it makes perfect sense in development, you're looking at the log stream by, you feel like you're in the matrix, everything's going well, but then you put the thing in production and probably you haven't used log levels because I mean, who the f uses log levels? And Next thing you know, you're spitting gigs and gigs of log files onto your log server. So this is all about being more careful with where you actually log your error messages and where you log your exceptions. And you have to think about logging as actually handling the error. So it's one thing to um, handle the error. So if you have an IO error, for example, to retry, or if there's a login error to prompt the user for another input, um, and, you know, logging the error is actually another form of handling it because it's the code saying, I need a human operator to look into this problem and here's where the problem happened. So remember from tip number one, you're already adding the context. You're making sure that contextually your error makes sense because you've, you've listed all of the different places that it comes from. Uh, and in some languages you can do this with a stack trace. In other cases you have to add the context manually. You know, Java and Python will allow you to actually output a stack trace that actually makes sense. And you can put stack traces in your logs, but again, you know, the problem with that is that it's often not as detailed as it really could be. So, for example, if I'm looking at a web process that's trying to do a login on a user and I'm having a problem connecting to the database, what I want to see is I had an I.O. problem, I couldn't connect to the database, I was trying to perform a validation of the password against the database for user X at time Y, possibly even from an IP address or some other type of contextual information. And each language has its own way of, you know, attaching information to the exception. But 
you should always make sure that the logging is not happening on each level, but rather once at the top where it makes sense to actually handle the air. This way, instead of getting six log lines that, uh, by the way, especially in a system that's handling requests asynchronously could end up mixed up or all over the place in your logs, instead of that you're getting one cohesive contextual log line that actually gives you the information you need to solve the problem. So tip number three for upping your game when handling errors is don't waste your time trying to catch and handle all of the different errors that are never going to happen. This is something that I see particularly in code done by zealots who are trying to implement TDD and you know obviously I love test driven development, I love code coverage tools but don't be shooting for 100% code coverage. That's just gonna produce really weird results. 92, 96%, that's probably a good metric. Again, this is not written in stone. Don't quote me on this all over the internet, but you should definitely be testing only the cases that are actually gonna happen. This is a delicate balance to be achieved here and handling errors from cases that are not gonna happen just makes your code muddy, makes it really difficult to follow. So that's it. I hope you find these tips helpful. Uh, if you have any other tips for handling errors, make sure to drop them in the comments below. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button if you found this useful at all. Uh, check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post my next video. That's all for now. I'll see you on the next one.